here. Um, I just finished two blogs on uh, addiction of uh, politicians and the enabling of media. And I wanted to swing around at these same subjects from a slightly different direction because any subject matter can be approached in a one-sided fashion and it doesn't really that lead to any real understanding and certainly not to any wisdom if we'd like to have a little bit of wisdom in our politics. Um, in those two videos I used the language of uh, addiction and I uh, wanted to talk about that in general as an idea uh, with regard to human behavior. Um, if we're honest about our lives we know that none of us are perfect. Right? Uh, if I stood up you would see a fat man. Uh, and the fact is I'm an addict in recovery. I had a rather rare addiction in a certain kind of sense because a lot of people don't admit to having an addiction with regard to it, but I was addicted to marijuana. Uh, it's a whole other story. Anyway, um, years ago we didn't talk about these things as addictions, we called them bad habits. A person who was a drunk had a bad habit or maybe low character or all kinds of other ways. With the uh, development of Alcoholics Anonymous and related uh, psychological research into the uh, human beings with bad habits, uh, we developed a slightly different vocabulary. And uh, one of the one of the one of those vocabularies is the vocabulary of addiction. Now. Uh, People can be addicted to all kinds of things. They can be addicted to shopping. They can be addicted to television. They can be addicted to computers. Well, what does that mean? Well, in a general sense, and the best definition I've ever heard of it is that um, you have an inner state uh, which you want to change. You don't like how you feel. You're uncomfortable. And you go outside yourself for something to change this inner state. Instead of sort of acting directly out of your own spirit, you might say, to, to alter your inner state, you go to a substance or you, you go shopping, you get high on this, that, or the other thing, uh, you go to the internet, you do whatever you do, but you succeed in changing your inner state. Now, this becomes an addiction when, when uh, it becomes habitual, that is, that this is the only way you change your inner state. And of course, it's not just any inner state that we want to change when we do this. Um, when someone is addicted to power, for example, uh, they really want to change us uh, from a state of powerlessness to a state of powerfulness. And um, these addictions of the will, as it were, that I've said before, uh, can be quite... Uh, strong and certainly uh, we even in the term megalomania which we sometimes refer to when we talk about dictators and, and such we recognize that the, that the psychological driver that makes a person want to behave in those kinds of ways is is pretty powerful and the result is is uh, unfortunate in terms of what happens to other human beings with the uh, addiction vocabulary and the enabler vocabulary, however, we can wander into a territory that's a little bit tricky. And so I want to add to that vocabulary a slightly different vocabulary or additional vocabulary, uh, not in contrast, but to complement the addiction vocabulary. And this is the vocabulary of wounds. As human beings, we have life experiences, and these experiences are troubling and many of them happen when we're young and vulnerable and we get what uh, I think a healthy psycholo psychological understanding of human beings would we would say that we have acquired a wound and uh, maybe this wound is is very deep maybe uh, you were abandoned by our mother when we were an infant or beat by our father when we were uh, a teenager. I mean, the number of wounds that people can have are quite large, and when we have these wounds, uh, th these become a background to why we behave in certain ways. So we could say that 
well, many politicians are addicted to power. That is, they get a kind of pleasure uh, from being able to be in control events and also uh, the fawning that goes with it when they are surrounded by people who suck up to them because they have power or grant them favors or seek to corrupt them or all the different complicated things. Uh, any particular individual who displays an addiction to power is not necessarily always a bearer, bearer of the same kind of wound, you might say. His, his psychology has not always got a certain characteristic. Uh, I don't know whether the word weakness really applies to a wound. You could say a tender spot in the soul life, you might say, a tender spot in the interior life, of course. The natural scientist with his fascination with brain chemistry is going to say all kinds of other things, but um, if you look into my work, you'll see that I don't entirely agree with, with a lot of things that natural science thinks. Not to say that they don't have a lot of good stuff to say, but they don't always think very clearly about things. At any rate, when we want to talk about politics and public life and the moral swampland in Washington and borrow the addiction enabling vocabulary um, we should also at the same time humanize people you know we don't want to just say that that Dick Cheney or uh, Joe Lieberman are dick addicts to power which is pretty observably true if you watch how they behave um, we also want to humanize them and recognize that there's more to that than than meets the eye that people are brought into these states of being in certain kinds of uh, dynamic through certain kinds of dynamic processes in their biographies, which makes them susceptible to uh, acquiring uh, an addiction or some such thing. Uh, so let us keep in mind that, that uh, all of us bear wounds, and even public figure, figures bear wounds. But at the same time, uh, we need to understand that, uh, or make a distinction between what politicians do and what uh, the press does when they talk about ideas and when they carry out their activity. That by and large, the the subject that they talk about and the way they talk about it is secondary to the psychological drivers, um, which is for politicians, exercise of power or. or control of, of the truth in order to gain some advantage and for uh, members of the media it's uh, rising through that uh, hierarchical structure by which they get uh, more popularity more personal wealth more self-esteem whatever it is that they that they seek and hunger for when they want to become a media personality and as part of that part of their culture the culture of media is this idea of the story and of course the story doesn't necessarily mean the truth. So when we look at media personalities and political personalities, we can see people who display addictive behaviors. We can also see people who bear wounds. And we can also see people that have a problem with truth and with the application of reason to, to subjects which are very important. Because what politicians do and what media points out affects us all. They are kind of a nexus point in which a whole lot of what goes on in a society uh, comes to fruition or to failure. And for those reasons alone, we need to be very careful about what we think and how we go about thinking it.